Hello and welcome to Delaney Studios online lessons on YouTube. So today I'm going to teach you how to do a little seascape uh, with a little boat. So for today's lesson, you're going to need a piece of watercolor paper if you have it. If you don't have it, just normal paper is fine. Um, you may get a little bit of a wrinkle in the paper if you're using normal uh, printer paper, but that's okay. You'll need a rubber, 2B pencil, a bit of paper towel or tissue, and you're going to need a jar of water. You're going to need a brown watercolor color. You're gonna need some blues and you're gonna need some black. And if you wanna do the little flag, you need some red if you wanna do your little flag red. You also need a couple of paint brushes. So I've got a stack here. These are all round tip tacklon brushes. I've got a double O brush, the tiniest one. Then I've got a number four and then I've got a number 12. So what we're going to do first is plan it out. So whenever you're doing a landscape or a seascape, you always want to find the horizon line first. The horizon line is what separates the sky from the ocean. So all you're going to do is just a simple line going across. It doesn't have to be perfect because we'll be painting over it later. The next part I'm going to draw in is the actual boat itself. So I'm going to start with how high I want my boat to be. So I'm going to start about here. I'm going to do the front of the boat. So it's a slight line, line down on that way. And a slight line down with a little bit of a turn up on one side. Then simply join the side of the boat with the horizon line and do the same on the other side. You can take this time to do the mast. Um, if you don't have a ruler handy, another really great thing to use is just your paintbrush. That can be a ruler. The mast sits just behind the front of the boat's little corner. And I do recommend doing the mast very tall. Just so there's a guide there. It doesn't have to be perfect and it, you don't have to make it any thicker than that. Just as long as you know where you're going. All right, we might do one centre line for there at the front of the boat. All right, I'm not going to draw the railings in. Um, we can do that with paint um, and the little um, bits of rope as well, the rigging. We can do that with pencil later, okay? So what we need to do now is build up our sky. So I'm getting my bigger brush and I'm going to wet my sky. So this is wet on wet technique, which means you're wetting your paper and then you're adding wet watercolor on top. So I'm going over my boat, can go right up in the corners. So you can just see how wet that page is with a little bit of a shine that you're getting there. And there's a little rhyme we use in class, which is the wetter the better with watercolor. You can see there's nice big chunks of blue in the center and then it's a really soft gray everywhere else. So if you wanted to do more stormy weather, you'd add more gray and I might do that on this one just so it's a bit more clear on the camera. Okay, so it's really nice and wet, but not inside my boat because the color will only go where you've put the water. That's the best thing about wet on wet technique. If your page starts to curl like this, what you can do is flip it over and put a little bit of water on the back. Because what it's doing is expanding the paper because it's wet. So it's going to pull on the back and cause a curve. So you can actually give it a little bit of water on the back and that stops the curve from happening. Just make sure you've got um, a tablecloth or something underneath. This is my work table, so I'm not too worried but um, you might wanna make sure that if you're working at home, you have a nice piece of newspaper down or a bit of paper towel down um, or a tablecloth. Okay, so you have lots of water on there. Now what I'm gonna do is pick a nice bright blue. I'm going to use this blue here. So this is the Kohenor uh, Dry Watercolor Reels. And all I'm gonna do is paint in a horizontal motion, back and forth like zigzags. And I can move this colour around. If I feel like it's too bright there, I can pick it up and I can actually move it. If you feel like any bits are a bit dry, just add a bit more water to it. And you can really push it around. Okay. 
And what you can also do if you'd like to pick out clouds before we get on to doing our grey clouds is you get your paper towel or tissue and you can actually dot out your clouds. So it takes it out, it puts it on the your tissue or on the piece of paper towel, you just dot it out. Now you can come back in with a bit of grey. So I'm going to use this little grey here. So swirl the brush around to activate. You have to be a little bit patient with the greys. It takes a bit of time to activate them. Now with the clouds, what you want to do is a gentle wash up the top. Again, if it's starting to dry out, dip your brush in a little bit more water. And with the clouds, try to keep the grey towards the bottom of your clouds. You want to keep it in a cloudy, curvy motion. And always come back in with a blend with extra water because that will stop it from getting a really harsh line. I'm just adding greys to the bottom. So it's all grey. So you can do it in a dotting motion if that suits you. And I want to soften the grey as it comes down next to the boat. It looks like clouds in the horizon. I'm layering up these clouds to make them look interesting. More water, it's all starting to dry off a little bit. So it's all just pushing it around just with water, nothing else. And you can make the clouds deeper or softer, depending on how much grey you put down. Lots of dotty motions to make it look like cloud. Wash your brush and then spread it out just with water so you don't get a harsh line at the top of your clouds. That's not what you want. Wash your brush, spread it out with just water. If you want any of the clouds to be really white on top, you just don't paint them in. So with watercolour, anything that's white, you just simply don't paint it. Really defining my clouds here. I just want to bring out some extra little highlights and shadow. Wash your brush. Spread it out. And if there's any cloud that you're like, oh geez, I don't I don't like that very much, you can just get your tissue and pull the cloud back out again. For example, if I wanted a little bit of a highlight on this one. 
I'm just going to take out some of that cloud and you can rework it. So it takes almost 50% of your colour off. Spread that out. And because my page is still really wet, when I'm doing this dotting, you can see it start to spread out, it doesn't just leave little chunks. Try not to do strips of dark grey. You want to keep it quite light and uh, dotty is a better motion. It's really subtle layers. You have to be quite um, patient when it comes to ocean painting and cloud painting. So lots of layers. Okay, I'm happy with that sky. I've got some little highlights in my clouds happening and now I want to get onto my ocean. So wash your brush. I'm going to switch up to a the double O brush. So um, on the brush it has two slash zero, which means double O. And what you want to do is select some different blues and perhaps a green for a sea green tone. So I'm going to start with a darker blue. I'll probably use the darker blue and the mid blue and then a green to add over the top of it. If you don't have an aqua, you might may have an aqua blue. Start along that horizon line. My clouds in the background are nice and dry now, so I'm not worried about the ocean going up into the sky. What you want to do is work in horizontal strips. So it's going to be quite dark under the boat right up on that horizon line so you can't see your pencil lines anymore. And if they start to run, this one's starting to run, all you need to do, get you a bit of paper towel or tissue and dab it up. And you can rework over the top because it's dry. You do little stripes, long stripes, Little brushes don't hold a whole lot of water, so you're going to be doing a lot of dipping. All right, now let's select our different blue. So we gently swirl our brush in there. You want to be careful with small brushes. Uh, you don't want to damage the bristles, so just gentle swirling. Don't press too hard. And bring our different blue in. You definitely want to leave gaps. You don't want to fill it all in because it needs to look like waves. And always remember, it's totally fine to change this artwork. If you want to change something and you want to add something, you want to turn it into a pirate ship, totally fine. It's nice to make it your own. Okay, let's find a green. So. I quite like this green, it's like a real forest green. Activate. Once you've activated your green, you can do some stripes of green. This should turn it to a nice sea green because your blue is still fairly wet. And that's your ocean done. So if you're interested in it blending a little bit more, you can drop a bit of water on top. You can fill some of those gaps just by dropping water on top. That's how you get this sort of tie dye look where you're getting one color flowing into another, just dripping water on top. And wash your brush. 
Now we're going to come into doing some brown on the boat. So on the green palette of this one, there's a really nice dark brown. So it's this one here. So I'm going to wet my little brush, my double O brush. I'm going to activate that brown. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to be really careful not to get it near the ocean. I'm just going to do a quick outline at the top of my boat. That hides your pencil lines too. So I'll come close, but don't touch yet. You can always do that again when it's a little bit drier or you can dab it with a tissue. So I'm not touching. Again, not touching the bottom there. Tricky part is the mast. This is where you really want to take your time to do the mast. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually dry my artwork. So you can do this by laying a tissue down because my sky is still wet. So you can put a tissue down on your sky. Very gently just pat it with your fingers. Don't ever wipe watercolour because it will actually end up wiping the colours all over. So I'm giving it really gentle tap and then I'm going to very carefully peel it away and you can see that there's some colour on the tissue and then just give it really gentle dry down where the mast is because if you were to paint the brown while it's wet the background's wet that brown is going straight into the sky so that's the one thing you've got to be really careful of with wet on wet technique so got my brown on my brush slowly slowly does the mast if you're not a fan of painting the mast in if you'd rather draw it in with a uh, texture that is perfectly fine if you've got a brown texture or a black texture awesome okay i'm going to go dry my artwork and i will be right back Okay, so I've gone off and dried mine with a hairdryer. If you don't want to, if you don't want to use a hairdryer or you don't have a hairdryer to use, just make sure that you put a tissue down and dab it. Particularly if you wet the back of your um, piece of paper to begin with to stop it from curling, it does take a little bit longer to dry, so you have to be a little bit patient. Okay, so now it's all dry. My ocean is dry as well. I can now bring all the sides of the boat right to the bottom of the sea, so I can't see any of my pencil work anymore. All right, okay, so I'm going to build up the left hand side of my boat with a bit of shadow. So I'm thinking about the direction of the slats on the boat, so the wooden slats. So I want to come up on a slight angle on the left. And the right hand side of the boat's a lot lighter, so we won't have to do as much there, but these slats come along the boat. Now what I'm going to do is get a bit of black on my brush. So the black is on the blue palette next to the grey. Extra lines of black on the left and then only a few on the right, not too many. It gets lighter and lighter as you use, it looks more grey. Now wash my brush just with water on my brush, not too drippy. There's no drips left on it. It's just a nice damp brush. What you want to do is just run your brush in between all of those lines. So the original lines will still stay there, but you'll get a nice gray brown coating over the top. So it fills in all the gaps and doesn't make it look too cartoon. And we're going to do the same on the shadow side. So not too much water on your brush, that's the trick. So it even reactivates the little colours that are dry. You can add a little bit more black and let it run down if you'd like to. If that's too much for you, wash your brush. Dry it a little bit so it's a bit dry. Then you can push it around where it needs to go and I'd like a bit more shadow down here.
and I'm happy with that. So now we can come in and do our little sales. So the sales are, are blue gray. So I like to start with gray first. So I'm going to activate that gray. You can draw your sales in if you're um, not sure exactly where to do them. It's um, totally up to you how large your sales are going to be. So what I'll do is I'll start about here and I'm going to come right down to my boat, nice and slow. And then I simply fill in next to my mast, fill it in with grey. And if you like the blue look of the sails, just while it's wet, get a little bit of blue on your brush, not a lot. And if your mast runs into the sails, it's, it's okay, don't worry too much. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So this other little sail's a bit smaller, so get your grey. This time it comes from the middle of the boat, it comes much shorter than the first sail. And then add your blue over the top. And we've got a little extra part here where the sails come from. It's like a little T. And we also have a flag. So all of this is buying us some time for the sails to be dry because we can't do these little railings until the sails are dry because they will just bleed. So I'm going to select a nice red. So I've got a nice red here. So I call a lipstick red, it's nice and warm and it's not orange. So not too much colour on your brush. You don't want your brush to have any big blobs. Two wobbly lines that join at the end and then simply fill them in. And again, you can turn this into a pirate ship if you want to put a pirate flag on there, that's fine too. I'm going to give that some more time to dry and in the meantime I'm going to use my 2B pencil and I'm going to do the ropes. So the ropes all start from this little section here. Again I'm going to use my brush, just make sure that your brush is nice and dry and I'm going to use that as a ruler but if you have a ruler you can definitely use your ruler. All right I want it to come to the side of my boat so I'll line it up. We've got one line there and we've got a second one in a little bit. One there and then we've got one coming in on the other side from the mast towards the back of the boat. Make sure you don't get your fingers in the way. And that's our little ropes. And the last thing we need to do is we need to put railings on. So again, I'm just going to make sure I either go and dry it or just dab it with some paper towel or tissue. Really take your time to think about how dry it really has to be because it does have to be very dry. You really don't want those fine little railings going in. Again, if you're not confident painting them with a small brush, you can just draw them in. You can draw them in with texture or with pencil. That's perfectly fine. So I'm going to get my tiny double O brush. One railing starts in front of the mast and it comes along the boat. I'm going to end it at the sail. Just there. And then the rest of the railings are just simply vertical lines. The mast is hiding where one would be so you can just skip that one.
And that's one railing done and we're going to do a railing on the other side. So start with the top railing first. Little brushes do not carry a lot of colour or water, so a lot of re-dipping is necessary. Just remember these ones are straight. It's very tempting to put them on an angle because the boat's on an angle. Try to get them as straight as you can. Okay, and that's it done. So make sure you always sign it and date it. And I will see you guys next time for another lesson. Thank you for joining me.